<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, horny making us all horny earlier on this morning. Pause. That sounds a bit wrong, but... Einstein Dagger, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to Pochettino news and a whole heap of transfer speculations coming up. Do you know what? Look, I'm getting excited now about next season. Now that mathematically we're not going to get relegated for this season, what's there left anymore of this particular season besides a feel-good factor? Hopefully we can pick up some more wins, but let's gear up for next season, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get stuck into this. Chelsea are set to conclude the head coach search this week. Final decision expected in coming days with Maurizio Pochettino, the strong favorite. New man will collaborate with Lampard and directors before summer starts. So, look, as expected, um, when we got that victory against Bournemouth, it was a good time to get Pochettino news up and running. And it looks like there will be something hopefully by the end of this week. It's a clear favorite from uh, for Maurizio Pochettino. And uh, look, I don't know whether we're going to get this before the Nottingham Forest game. It would be very, very nice to do that. Because then, as I keep saying, and I've said it previously, the fans can relax a little bit. There's some light at the end of the tunnel. And we can start getting excited about next, next season. Look. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that the victory against Bournemouth, albeit Bournemouth, I understand, but our form has been so, so bad. And, you know, a loss was expected against Bournemouth. But the thing that I really liked about that victory was you can see there's some clear talent in our team. And with the right manager, the right environment, hopefully, hopefully something can be done next season. I'm not expecting top four or anything like that, but a top six finish, I think, would be would be very, very prudent. And um, I think I think someone like Pochettino could potentially do that. So, look, um, Maurizio Pochettino news, hopefully by the end of this week, can come to fruition. Maurizio Pochettino's wife reveals she is in London with Pochettino, preparing to take charge at Chelsea. So, more and more this news is firming up, which is fantastic to see. And um, great, absolutely great. Pochettino's lawyers are in talks with Chelsea on the contract. So I'm, I'm keen to see how long is the contract going to be, what the wages are going to be. We've set a bit of a precedent with, with Graham Potter, you know, long-term contract, hefty wages. It will be interesting to see if we try and correct that with Pochettino, albeit Pochettino is probably a better manager. I think I think he definitely is a better manager than, than uh, Graham Potter. But I don't want to see five-year contracts, man, and hefty wages. I think decent, probably two year plus one. That's that's a good amount of time. And then during this time frame, it's up to Pochettino to showcase, you know, how much he can, you know, develop the players and where he can take us in the table, and then what he can do in terms of uh, pushing for the title and winning silverware. I think two years is good. One plus one is it's it's a fair position to start from anything more than that you know three plus one four plus one i think we're going to be making the mistake again and then you're going to be in trouble you know in terms of paying compensation if it doesn't go your way so you don't want to fall into that and wages as well you know uh, grand potter was what on 12 million per year pochettino what's he going to be on uh, which is something that we need to we need to look at as well um interesting times ahead but yeah, uh, the contract. I think I think this is probably what is delaying the situation, the contract stuff, because Pochettino doesn't have any agents apparently, and he's dealing with this situation directly. Obviously, he's got his lawyers, but we'll see exactly what transpires. Loftus Cheek is attracting a lot of interest. This is coming from Fabrizio Romano. This brother needs to go. I mean, I get it. You're you're earning a smart amount of money at Chelsea Football Club, but you need to leave, my man. If you want to rectify your footballing career to a certain degree. Then you gotta leave. You're not. You barely got any game time this season. Next season, you best believe you're not gonna get that much. I know a lot of people talk about you know he's a good utility player to have, but I don't need that anymore, man. I, I rather have specialists. I rather have um, yeah players that are gonna be mainstay of the team. You know, not bit part player, man. I understand there's value, but I rather get a youngster to give me that value. You know, uh, someone from the academy as opposed to Ruben Loftus Cheek, 150k. Per week, if we can somehow offload those wages, I know he's not going to want that. He's going to want to stick around, 
for another season and get those wages. But if there is, you know, a particular suitor out there that can somehow come close to his wages, he's got to understand as well that he's got to take a bit of pay cut. But look, potentially he may not. He may just stick around for another season and just bag that money. Jesus Perez is best known for being the fitness expert on Maurizio Pochettino's staff. The grueling fitness regime overseen by Perez was also viewed as helping Luke Shaw and Harry Kane. We need to be one of the fittest teams next season. There's no two ways about it. Absolutely no two ways about it. This season, I think one of the biggest factors of us not being fully fit, the players, is because of the size of the squad. You know, a lot of the players kind of had the feeling that oh, I'm not going to play this week. Uh, I played last week, but potentially may not play this week. And then, you know, the motivation stays down. They're not really uh, excited to keep themselves upbeat in the training ground. So, look, I think that must have played a bit of a role in regards to not being fit this season because of the large squad. So we need to trim that squad down. But next season, smaller squad and we have to, we must, the preseason must be a banger, an absolute banger, so that by the time the Premier League starts, we are none of this, oh, it's it's early days, it's just, you know, first game, second game, third game, you know, they're just finding their feet. No, up and running from the get-go. We cannot screw next season up. We don't have the luxury to, to have a slow start. No, 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 no. Chelsea prioritizes... Uh, will be defensive midfielder and striker. Lavia has always been on the list. Keep an eye on Moses Caicedo as Chelsea know him. Mark, uh, McAllister um, to Liverpool is not done yet either. Also, Manu Kone is attracting a lot of interest from clubs. Chelsea will be smart on this position and spend the right amount of money. Uh, this is from Fabrizio Romano. Look, the kind of midfielder that we need is the Rodri-esque, you know, the Fabinho-esque, the Declan Rice-esque, those type of players that are going to be a lot more, di you know, disciplined and can sit deep, do the simple things, break down the play and, and in possession, lay it off to the players that are going to do the damage. That's the biggest factor that I'm looking for. So we have to understand what type of profile that we want in midfield. Now, that is, for me, is a defensive midfielder and that is the priority. We can add another midfielder on top of that, you know, potentially a number eight, box to box, whatever the case is. But that profile that I just spoke about is very, very much needed. We don't have that profile in our team. And not just we need that profile, we need to obviously have the organization, the structure to ensure that whoever comes in into that profile, that, that role can be fruitful. Because no point in getting someone like Declan Rice and your structure and your organization is all off. Even Declan Rice will struggle. But I believe Pochettino will get us uh, nice and organized. And, and the DM is very much interested. Now, looking at some of these names, Moses Caicedo definitely passes that. I think he would be a fantastic DM. Um, then we've got he uh, Lavia. Lavia, look, of, of the, the games that I've seen of Lavia, he seems more of a box-to-box. -box. Could he potentially mold into a DM? Yes, he can. But right now, I honestly think he's more of a box-to-box. -box. He loves bombing forward and that's one of his traits um if you see some of the games that that lavia plays you'll see he has that desire to bomb forward now could he be molded into a dm he's young yeah he could but don't pencil him down as a straight up defensive midfielder someone who's going to be disciplined and stay deep like a sure many style of a player um he's not that he's not that sure many-esque type of a player so if we want to get someone like lavia I think that will be someone that we add on to on top of the, the DM that we're looking for. So that's just my thought. Let me know what you think about, you know, Lavia as, as, as his player profile. I'd really love to know because there's a bit of a split situation in the fan base. A lot of people are saying he's a DM. Some are saying he's box-to-box. -box. I personally think he's a box-to-box. -box. Could he be molded into a DM? Maybe. He's young. So we could see that. McAllister is another box-to-box. -box. I don't think he's an out-and-out -out DM. If you're going to get McAllister, then Enzo will have to play as the deepest midfielder. And a lot of people are saying allow Enzo the freedom to roam from 6 to 8 to 10, which I think makes sense. So you need to get the right profile. Uh, Manu Kone is a particular player. I've heard from social media that, yes, he's a defensive midfielder and he can do that job. 
very, very well. Not someone that I've watched, though. So lots of options here. Many people are getting very worried about Declan Rice. Oh, Chelsea are going to regret if we don't get Declan Rice. Look, me personally, my first preference was Declan Rice. But the fact that we're not going to be in Europe next season and Declan Rice desires to be in Europe, Arsenal are apparently in the in the um, you know in the front line at the moment for Declan Rice. So yes, it's sad, but at the same time, you know all these seasons, all these years that we've been interested, how come we didn't go for Declan Rice? So look, a lot of people are saying we're going to regret it. Me personally, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Is he a top player? And if he goes to Arsenal, is that going to be a bit of an issue? I don't really care. Arsenal probably will do well with Declan Rice, but I'm pretty sure if we find the right profile and the right fit for the team, we should be fine as well. I don't think there is any notion of us needing to be, you know, regretful about De Declan Rice. Um, and the word in the streets is that Chelsea are probably moving away from such a hefty um, price tag on Declan Rice. Chelsea have reopened talks over extending Mason Mount at the moment. Mount is after more money than Chelsea are prepared to offer. Um, but the but that could change depending on Pochettino's stance. This is from Bobby Vincent uh, from London First uh, News Outlet. Look, I always knew the money factor was an issue as well. On top of the length of the um, contract term and um, there are other things that go into the contract in terms of image rights and bonuses and this and that. No, money. A lot of people will tell you, oh, it's never about the money with Mason Mount. It was always about the money. Come on, that was a large part probably would have been about the money. So, you know, the fact that Chelsea are probably not looking to budge on this, I don't know. Look, do I want him to stick around? I don't mind. I really do think under Pochettino, Mason Mount could be a very, very big player for us. And look, it does matter. Stuff like him caring about Chelsea, him being Chelsea through and through, all of this stuff, it does matter. I'm not going to be one of those fans that are going to say, oh, I don't care about that. No, it does matter. He does care. But at the same time, you know, he sees players like, Kai Havertz on hefty wages um, and many other players on hefty wages, he probably thinks, hey, how come I don't I don't get that? But it's just a it's it's a it's the circumstance, do you know what I mean? Mason Mount finds himself in a very, very sticky circumstance at the moment. Had he already done this during the last regime, he probably would have got himself 250k, 260k, something like that. Now under this new regime. It's going to be very difficult. We are looking to trim down on wages and the fact that we don't have any European football next season, I don't think he's going to get the wages that he desires, which is in excess of 200K, in my personal opinion. Roberto Pochettino wants to ideally add players with Premier League pedigree to Chelsea's squad and has identified a goalkeeper, midfielder and striker as position to strengthen. Pochettino has also been told uh, that the club must first offload players to make the squad more manageable. And I agree, and I definitely agree with the GK midfielder and striker. I think these are the three positions. We don't need to go out there and just throw money left, right, and center and buy another eight players. Those three positions are definitely the three positions I'd look to strengthen uh, in the summer and get rid of whole heap of players. There is hope that Pochettino can be confirmed by the end of this week, though Lampard is expected to remain in charge for the final four games. Look, yeah, I mean, what's the point of getting rid of Lampard now? Might as well stick around with him. But yeah, hopefully some news about Pochettino by the end of this week that he becomes the next Chelsea manager. Incoming Chelsea head coach Mauricio Pochettino is targeting a new spine for his team this summer. He has identified a new goalkeeper, central midfielder, and number nine has three positions he would ideally look to strengthen. He also wants a long-term central midfielder to partner for club record signing Enzo Fernandez. Uh, I agree. We need a, a defensive midfielder next to um, Enzo Fernandez who can relieve him of, of the stress of, you know, being defensively astute. I mean, look, Enzo is, when you see him play for Argentina with a proper structure, proper, you know, style, Enzo Fernandez does his role very, very well from deep, you know, interceptions, reads the play well, breaks down the play as well, and then equally so, so good on the ball, um, you know, spreading the pass around from deep. At Chelsea, what's happening is because we don't have a structure, we don't have a particular, uh, you know, great organization, off the ball, whenever it's a, it's a transition from the opposition, Enzo Fernandez looks, looks out of sorts at times, and not just Enzo Fernandez, all the other players looks out of sorts. And it's not because of the players being bad. It's more to do with the lack of structure. 
because Enzo Fernandez defensively is very good as well. I have a look at his time at Benfica. Have a look at his time at Benfica. But I do agree. We do need someone like in the mold of Declan Rice, in the mold of um, Caicedo next to him, just to just to give uh, that balance and allow Enzo to do what he does best, which is roam around in midfield and uh, uh, look for those key passes. Um, which is going to be quite important. Chelsea have discussed signing into Milan's Andre Onana through, though he is not thought to be the goalkeeper favoured by Maurizio Pochettino, who is expected to be, con uh, to be confirmed as the club's next manager this week. Look, we've given you, uh, you know, in this particular channel, uh, my um, thoughts on Onana. I mean, look, he's all right. He's a decent goalkeeper, no doubt about that. On his day, can be very, very outstanding. But he does have flaws as well, man. He can be erratic. He can be very, very crazily erratic. And he's only a centimeter taller than Kepa. So people who are complaining about reach and whatnot, I think Onana will probably have the same situation as well. Does he position himself better to uh, not get beaten from long range as opposed to Kepa? Maybe. But uh, look, for me, David Raya, Mike Magnin, those are the goalkeepers that we should be looking at. Napoli and Juventus have expressed interest in signing Chelsea winger Christian Pulisic. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. No, no need to see Christian Pulisic anymore. Um, time to move on. If there is interest from Napoli and Juventus, let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. There is some talks of Chelsea being open to letting Raheem Sterling leave this summer, but I think it's going to take a miracle. If they do, he's unlikely to leave London. And then we have the fee we signed him for, plus another four years of huge wages. Would we be able to balance if the fee on the books or FFP, I have my doubts. Uh, this is from Chelsea Dodgers. Um, there was rumours about Raheem Sterling. Look, I can't see him going. I'm one of those fans that still have hope on Raheem Sterling. And I know he's on hefty wages. I know he's got more years left in his contract and he wants to be in London. I can't see how he leaves. And I, we need some sort of experience next season. And I do expect him under Pochettino to give that added experience. And I expect him to be fully be, uh, you know, in the goals and assists next season. Someone who's going to be crucial for us um, moving up the table from this abysmal season, man. So, look, I've not given up on Raheem Sterling. I truly believe he can give us something next season. Understand Pochettino has given a list uh, to Chelsea of targets and players to keep, sell targets. McAllister, Lataro Martinez a goalkeeper and others strongly wants Mount to stay. Martinez has already on board's striker list and now directly by Poch. Poch heavily scouted Lautaro at Spurs. Look, what do I have to say about Lautaro? What a disappointing World Cup he had. And this season as well for Inter Milan, overall, the package has not been there. Three, four seasons ago, you know, him and Lukaku were doing a madness at Inter Milan. And that, at that point, I was looking at him thinking, wow, this guy is going to be sensational, much like that Luis Suarez-esque sort of attributes around him. But his stocks has gone down. His, his, yeah, his, um, his ability, his performances have really taken a bit of a nosedive. So I'm not really sure if I'm too keen on this player now. And I'm very, very worried that this is the type of player, if he comes to the Premier League, I think he's going to get absolutely done. Um, so I'm really worried how much money we're going to spend. And once again, Inter Milan. Don't want to do too much business with Inter Milan. Already we're interested with Onana. We've got the Lukaku situation. I don't want to deal with Inter Milan anymore. And I, I truly feel, believe Lutaro Martinez is going to be Lutaro Martinez is going to be someone who could struggle in the Premier League. And I don't want that, man. Let's let's um, you know look at players like Ivan Tony and whatnot. Premier League proven in that sense. I know I've recently talked about Vitor Roque, but that's because I'm looking at if we do want to invest someone uh, on someone, might as well be someone for the long term, a young kid, mold them into being Premier League proven, I suppose, down the track. Chelsea and Newcastle interest in Rafinha. Back again with Rafinha, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I wanted this guy last season. I'm not even going to lie. I really liked him at Leeds. Um, He's been unlucky. I've been watching some Barcelona games, man. He's he's been a bit unlucky with some of his finishes. He hit the post, hit the bar a few times. Yes, some of the decision makings haven't been good. Um, and and looks like Barcelona might look to part ways with uh, Rafinha. All that drama that happened last season. This guy, we wanted him. We had the money ready. Top Bolly had the money ready, but he opted to choose Barcelona. And I don't know if I want if I want him back now. Like. 
he could be another one of those Aubameyang situation where the heart is truly not there to join another team. So I want to stay away from this sort of stuff, man. There's just a bit too much, too much, you know, salty feelings in this situation. So uh, look, could he perhaps come into the Premier League and do well? Yes, he could. Um, his time at Leeds wasn't that bad at all. In fact, was very, very good. But once again, another factor is, do we need another winger? Noni Medweke, yes, a lot of people will say he's injury prone. But we've got Noni Medweke, Mudrik, Sterling. Potentially, we're looking to keep Shao Felix. And then you've got Nkunku as well. So I don't know if we do need another winger. We need another striker. We need a striker. Um, defensive midfielder and a goalkeeper. I don't really think we need this player. I'd rather bank all my money on Noni Medweke. And then don't forget, there's no European football. It's one game a week. Premier League and the domestic cups. So I don't think we need this. Let's roll the dice with Noni Medreke, who I truly believe could be something big. And if there is an injury, then you've got Sterling, you've got Modric, you've got Jao Felix, you've got Nkunku. So, um, yeah, I want to stay away from this. But once again, let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what you think about Rafinha to Chelsea rumours. This is coming from Fabrizio Romano, so there seems to be something there. Last but not least, this is what we're going to end it with, ladies and gentlemen. Jose Mourinho refused Chelsea's advances. This was coming out earlier on today. This is from Fabrice Hawkins. So this, this brother, when it comes to French news, he's bang on. He is bang on. French players, French news, French players, when they come to Chelsea, this guy seems to have the early news. He, he declined. He declined the advances of Chelsea. Look, I... I thought it was a long shot. I would have loved to see him back at Chelsea just to give us that that much needed, you know, identity back again. Um, that manager that's going to command respect. But I knew this was a long shot. He was never going to get along with our owners and our board who are looking for a specific type of a manager. I'm not going to go out there and say, "Oh, yes, man," and Pochettino is a yes man, this, that, the other. But I think a more younger, I suppose, manager. Uh, someone who's going to be able to deal with all the different moving stuff that we have at the moment, um, you know, stadium redevelopment, multi, you know, dimensional uh, club model, a whole heap of directors that we have involved and whatnot. Um, yeah, it just doesn't fit. Rumor is he's looking at the Real Madrid or the PSG job. So uh, interesting that that he has refused Chelsea's advance, and I believe I believe that probably was the case. So. Um, yeah, now it seems like, you know, Nagelsmann, Jose Mourinho, uh, Luis Enrique was rejected by Chelsea, but it seems to be a pattern that, you know, our owners and our board, um, yeah, they don't want some of these managers, man. They don't want some of these managers, but yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you thought about everything we've talked about today. Pochettino potentially coming in by the end of this week, announcement um, of his uh, appointment. Rafinha, Latara Martinez, and a whole heap of others, other transfer news that we talked about. Let me know in the comment section. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I know the last couple of days we haven't done any uh, lives. We'll come back and do a live stream earlier on UK time uh, very, very soon as the transfer market really, really heats up. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, see ya.